This presentation explores the experiences of the English language learners in the community college. My name is Rebecca Handley and I'm the Director of Clinical Education for a Respiratory Therapy Program at Grossmont Community College in the San Diego area. Grossmont College is one of the two colleges in the Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College District, where the second college in our district is Cuyamaca College. Respiratory therapy is an allied health profession that is in the Division of Allied Health and Nursing. I've been teaching for the Respiratory Therapy Program for 14 years and I've been the Director of Clinical Education for six years. The Respiratory Therapy Program is a high-paced, high-content, rigorous two-year program where ELL students often struggle if not fail out of the program if they don't seek help. It has been my experience that ELL students do struggle with math, but almost all of them struggle with reading and comprehension. Therefore, for this project, I will present the obstacles that ELL students face in the community college and the specific strategies for the ELL student in a California community college. I will also highlight ways to remove barriers for ELL students in a nursing classroom, which is very similar to a respiratory therapy classroom. In addition to exploring several obstacles, I will also spend a great deal of time examining the websites of Grossmont College, Cuyamaca College, and our district's website. The community college is an important entry point for many students who wouldn't otherwise go to college. Community college is affordable, has open enrollment, provides preparation to a university and vocational training, along with basic skills instruction. Community college also allows for economic and social mobility, but it also significantly benefits society as a whole. Unfortunately, a disproportionate number of ELL students do not participate in higher education. However, those who do attend community colleges. Nearly a quarter of the nation's degree-seeking community college students come from an immigrant background. Also, there is a substantial gap in student success, which is completion of college-level courses between immigrant ELL students and non-ELL students, particularly Latino ELL students. Only seven out of 100 first-time Latino students transfer to a university. Most community colleges have English as a second language departments and provide ESL courses for those ELL students who do not meet the placement requirements to enroll in college level English courses. Most ELL students must take ESL courses before moving on to college level courses. ESL courses seek to address primary barriers to college success for ELL students by developing their academic skills. But is it for everyone? One problem is that some ESL programs confound international students with ELL students, where the international student definitely has a multitude of different needs when compared to the U.S. educated ELL student. Also, in a 2010 study, it concluded that ESL placement had a positive effect for recent immigrants and largely a negative effect for U.S. born or foreign born U.S. educated students. Assessment and placement processes can misplace ELL students into either developmental English, which is also known as remedial English, or ESL. Both ESL and developmental English can limit some students' access to a challenging English curriculum and from completion of college-level English. This misplace misplacement of students can lead to attrition. There are three distinct differences between ESL and developmental English programs at the community college. ESL faculty have different qualifications and training than developmental English faculty. Additionally, ESL curriculum draws from a different field and research base than developmental English. And when appropriate, ESL courses provide extensive opportunities to practice a variety of oral language reading and writing, which are often not available in developmental English. Yet both ESL and developmental English may be disconnected from college level coursework. But the largest key difference between ESL and developmental English is the pathways to completion. The ESL pathway is significantly longer than the developmental pathway. Plus after students complete the ESL pathway, they frequently have to complete developmental English courses before they can move on to college level courses, leading to only an 8% completion rate. The good news is, is that there are new practices to bridge the gap. Community colleges across the country 
are implementing acceleration reform to ESL and developmental English that reduce the time it takes for students to complete their requirements. There have been greater e efforts to align curriculum to the skills and knowledge needed in college level English. More community colleges are allowing for concurrent enrollment and higher level of ESL or developmental English along, the, along with college level English courses. Now I'd like to focus on the ELL student and California community colleges. More college-bound Latinos enroll in community college than university in California and are the largest group of ELL students in California community colleges. However, research has shown that Latinos are the lowest achieving students in math and English. Currently, the community college EL ESL courses, also known as the ESL pipeline, play the role of gatekeeper to college level curriculum. It is assumed that all ELL students need the skills and knowledge attained in ESL courses in order to succeed. The ELL student's background must be taken into account before placing the student in ESL. ESL is likely more beneficial for students who have not received substantial United States K-12 education. Many Latino ELL students find themselves stuck in the ESL pipeline, never enrolling in college-level courses. ESL instructors have had the difficult job of figuring out how to meet the needs of the heterogeneous group of ELL students. Placing Latino ELL students into mainstream college courses and allowing for concur concurrent enrollment in ESL in college-level course may play a role in college success. Here are some factors that, Im that are impacting Latino success in the pipeline. Despite having the same aspirations for academic success as other groups, Latinos are less likely to have taken college algebra, trigonometry, pre-calculus, physics, or chemistry in high school. De deficit views, also known as negative views of bilingualism, and a history of marginalization within schools have impacted Latino success across the pe pipeline. There have been recent improvements in ESL focus on preparing ELL students for the transfer level English. It is important to view language skills holistically and as the primary tool that gives students access to higher order learning opportunities. According to the literature, there are here are the recommendations for success for Latino community college students. Findings suggest that those ELL Latino students who mainstreamed early were more successful in terms of course completion at GPA. Research rep recommends the following. Latino ELL students should be encouraged and supported to take mainstream college courses. ESL instruction and non-ESL instruction need to collaborate in order to improve support for ELL students. Now I'd like to move on to the research that identifies the barriers for ELL students in the nursing classroom. ELL nursing students are a group of minority students who often struggle in nursing school and licensure examination. Attrition rates for ELL students in nursing programs are as high as 85%. Language barriers include lack of speaking and listening proficiency, finding communication with nursing staff challenging, struggling with medical abbreviations, verbal report and accompanying professional terminology. Language bridges, on the other hand, include providing lecture slides, allowing audio taping of lectures, creating vocabulary journals, using their own words to verbalize their understanding of key concepts, mixing study groups of ELL students and native speakers. There are cultural barriers to success, and these include student-teacher interaction and teacher learning approaches. ELL students view American majority students as disrespectful and outside of their cultural norms. Examples of this would be when an American majority student questions the instructor's authority or argues for test points. Therapeutic communication, such as telling a patient that they have a terminal illness, is culturally unacceptable. Instead, false reassurance would be acceptable practice for some ELL nursing students 
whereas it is common practice in U.S. hospitals to be upfront and honest with the patient about the state of their health. Specific faculty characteristics such as being unapproachable, ignoring students as a person, intimidating, derogatory, cold and inflexible can contribute to ELL students' lack of success as they would likely avoid contacting these instructors who exhibit these behaviors. However, cultural bridges to success include professional development that focuses on cultural awareness, sensitivity and competence, ELL student-led panel discussions to enlighten faculty with cultural understanding, and teachers who offer support, encouragement, patience, and compassion. In nursing education, as well in the respiratory therapy education, multiple choice test questions are designed to assess critical thinking and decision making. Academic barriers to success include those multiple choice test question where word qualifiers such as least, most, and best can be translated as antonyms, thus changing the meaning of the test question. Academic bridges to success include implementing test taking skills by teaching students the components of a multiple choice test question and reducing linguistic complexities such as using short, simple sentences stating information directly, and highlighting keywords. Here is some recommendation for nursing and respiratory therapy programs. ELL support programs should be implemented as the following, vocabulary building, grammar abbreviation and syntax review, oral presentations, role playing, especially a nurse to nurse verbal report, and test taking skills. Here I would like to take a closer look at the Student Success and Equity Plan for my college district. According to Gross Maquiamaca Community College District, their goal specifically states as such, our overarching goal for the community for Grossmont and Cuyamaca College Student Equity Plan are to increase access among targeted groups to transfer level courses courses and student support services on campus, improve basic skills and ESL course completion rates, and improve completion and retention rates for the targeted groups who enroll in transfer courses, degree and certificate courses, and for those who plan to transfer to a four-year college or university. Also in the summer of 2015, the Grossmont Quimaca Community College District joined the Achieving the Dream Network. The Achieving the Dream National Reform Network leverages four overarching approaches to close achievement gaps and accelerate student success nationwide. These four approaches are guiding evidence-based institutional change, influencing policy reform, generating and sharing knowledge, and engaging the community. I'm excited to say that in May of 2016, Cuyamaca College was awarded $1.5 million in grant money to approve and institute programs for student success and equity by reducing the remedial pipeline and better preparing students for college level coursework. The new programs include change, the change placement policies, and this policy will stop relying on assessment tests, which can be a poor indicator of ability. Instead, the college will use informed self-placement and high school GPA in order to increase college-level course enrollment. Another program it is Accelerate Remediation. This program will replace the traditional pipeline with accelerated single-semester courses that are aligned with a specific college-level course. A seven-course ESL pipeline will be replaced with a three-course model. And the last program will be Implement Concurrent Enrollment support models, student can enroll in a college level and a remedial support course at the same time. Lastly, I'd like to share with you some of the direct quotes from Dr. Juliana Barnes, the president of the Cuyamaca College. She has said, Cuyamaca College has already developed programs that are significantly reducing remedial education requirements in English, math, and ESL for certain groups of underprepared students and English language learners. Those students are success successfully completing college-level English and math courses at significantly higher rates and in much less time. And we want to transform teaching and learning at Cuyamaca College. 
Thank you for watching.